and it says, let the life I live speak for me. My daughter live that life. And the love that me and my family have seen from the Westchester Correction Facility, state troopers from the State Department is overwhelming. I had to come today to let you know this is her my oldest and when I hear you ladies talking about being a single mother so was I I have six kids five boys and one girl my husband passed away at the age of 41 I taught my kids to have Respect, regardless of whom you are, you give them respect. You don't have to engage if you don't want to engage, but you give respect and you carry yourself respectfully and you respect yourself first, but you give kindness. You speak to people. I don't care who they are, this is what I taught them. And I thank God today that they live. If you show kindness and love to anybody, you don't have to do what they've done or what they engaged in, but you speak to them, show them love and kindness. And when I look at all of my kids, I have a school teacher, I have an engineer here, we're at the University of Pennsylvania. I have Is here. I have another one here that worked for the state of New York. I have another one here that is a supervisor for an uh, Maxima insurance company. You see the mothers, and whatever, whatever you tell your child not to do, don't let your child see you engaged in it. If you do it, you go out and do it, but you don't tell them not to do something, and then you want to tell them I to do it yourself. That's right. I ain't going to say I didn't do nothing, but can't none of them tell you they saw me. But I am still in them. I let it stay there, and I never changed my mind when I told them not to do something, and they messed around and did it anyway. I didn't pick my feet up. And it hurted me sometimes because I have to have that hard love. And my daughter, I thank God, she was the um, only daughter. She was my best friend. She was my mentor. And I thank God when she touched each and every one of y'all lives. And believe me, if you need us, that's call us. And I know that if I need y'all. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Love each other. That's all it takes. Yes. Just love each other. I think that w we back on. Yeah, yes, sir. Oh, uh, I think you know. I mean, that was a, a timeless message, man. That's a strong woman right and, there. And Those and are her children. Yes, yes, and we have to respect the Calica family, Miss Calica, and 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 her sons. You know. And thank them for for accepting the award and, and 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 coming down, you know, from Rochester to accept the award and 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 spend time with uh, the law enforcement family, you know, in Westchester County, and and not only the the the, the event actually you know bring bring people together because you know we're 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 separated you know among cities among departments, um, among social groups. You know, and we need um, events like this to bring to bring us together. You know, especially especially officers of of, of color. You know, especially whether you're Latino, whether you're black, whether you're brown. You know, we, we we all have a a common interest and a common goal. You know, but we don't communicate with each other. You know, we we do not communicate, and I think more events like that um, will enable us to communicate. 
and better serve the community too, better serve the communities that we are in uh, throughout Westchester County. Now uh, we got we got a guest coming real quick, and I, I just yes. wanna, I, I got a couple of shout outs. Um, Anthony Old School Mitchell said, "What's up, Dagmar?" I never pronounced his last name right. Um, Jim Jim Jimenez Jimenez Jimenez. I, I apologize. The Hey Lorraine and fam, <coughs> Brian uh, Celo, uh, um, D Wilson, and some Brian Celo said from Rotterdam, Holland. Big up to AJ. Oh, um, shout out. Thank you for listening. Um, from Holland. Wow. Um, that's what's up. That's what's up. Um, also tuned in. Um, we have uh, Sandy Barnaby. Um, Pat English from Long Island. Um, and a few others. Uh, who else did you give me to say? Sean Patterson Howard. Oh, shout out to Sean Patterson Howard. Um, and everybody else. Um, with, with that, um. Uh, Sandy Barnaby said she's listening to us from the Raleigh Durham Airport. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> shout nice. out, shout out, shout out to Sandy listening to us in North Carolina. Word up. Um, and I want to bring our guest in uh, without further ado. Um, you know, we have all these elections coming up. And um, you might want to do me a favor and take off your green jacket. Oh, because yeah, of right. the, because of the green, green backdrop, <laughs> you, you, you're, you're partially disappearing. So um, uh, we, we try to, um, you know, there's a lot of elections going on, and we try to bring, um, we try to um, bring as many of the um, people that are running for office and give you a chance to know who they are, and um, so you can make uh, educated and informed decisions when it's time to hit the ballot box. So, Lorraine, would you introduce our guest, please? Oh, today we have a Republican in the house, and I'm really excited about it. Yeah, that's why, that's, why I asked her, that's why I asked her to introduce. Yeah, t today we have with us uh, uh, Julie Killian, who's running for the 37th District, uh, Senate District, uh, which was Latimer's old seat. Mm -hmm. And um, she's here. And she's going to tell us a little bit about herself, and she's got an interesting past that... That she, you know, she can talk about and and tell us, you know, why she's here and and why she feels she's the better candidate. Well, let, but let's start out with giving her official people before politics round of applause. Yes. So welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm excited uh, to be here. And you know, <clears throat> I give anybody who comes on the show a lot of credit, especially since we have. <laughs> we got people that are telling the Democrats not to come on, and Republicans are being like, oh, don't go on that show. But every Republican who's came on had a I good time and has said, you know, they enjoyed the show. So and they still come on. Anybody, anybody, anybody who comes on, um, we definitely um, um, definitely want to say thank you for taking your time. You're welcome. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, who are you? Where are you from? Why you're running? You know. Well, I was born in Mount Vernon. Yes, I heard that. Yeah. I heard that. 641 North Terrace in Fleetwood. Okay, Go okay. Mount Vernon. My dad was a Democratic district leader in Mount Vernon back in the 60s. Uh-oh, oh, cool. okay. okay. Okay, Yeah, I was raised by two Democrats. I love Democrats. <laughs> yes, I just happen to be Republican. They're all right. They're all right. Yeah, they're good. Uh, but I, uh, my parents actually moved up. We have six kids in my family. Um, so I was very interested to hear the lady earlier talking about her five sons and one daughter. In my family, I have four sisters and one brother. Wow. So it is not easy to raise a family at any time, and I have five children myself. So wow. Okay. I have four boys and one girl. So wow. wow. Oh, it's wow. very challenging. But um, my parents moved up to Connecticut because they could not afford Westchester, so I grew up a little bit more in Connecticut. But I went to Notre Dame and studied chemical engineering, came back mm -hmm. to New York, I uh, started working on Wall Street and got an MBA. And I worked until I was pregnant with my third child. And I have been retired for a little while, but um, women never retire. Mm -hmm. There's always something to do. And I've been involved in the community and raising my five kids for the last, okay. you know, 20, I've been in Rye 27 years. Okay. And it's been great, involved in lots of different things. For the last six years, I've been on Rye City Council. Mm -hmm. And the last two years of that, uh, Deputy Mayor. Oh, so oh okay, okay, okay. Well, well, okay. I didn't know yeah. what, well, Jesus. <laughs> uh, having, uh, having a family and five children has been really the most rewarding thing I've done, but I have to 
put second as um, being in public service. It's really been incredible, which is why I want to go to Albany. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am running for state senate because I believe we need change in Albany. There's a lot of uh, go along to get along. Uh, I think on both sides of the aisle, um, too much of the same old, same old. And I think we need new faces and fresh ideas and fresh perspective mm -hmm. and people that are willing to speak out and get things done for the people. Mm -hmm. now let me ask you a question. Um, <coughs> Westchester County being, I don't know about the whole county, I know down, st down mm -hmm. the lower part, being a, a heavy Democrat, you know, maybe two to one, and with the um, craziness that's going on in the higher office, um, do you think it's an uphill battle? Do you think those are challenges that... Um, you know, this, this di district is not as Democrat as the county as a whole. Right. Um, you know, running for office is always, is always a challenge. Um, it's a challenge to get your message out, but I, I did run for this office two years ago okay. in 2016, and I did lose um, to George. George and I are both from Rye. Okay. And, um, and he's so from Mount Vernon, too, originally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Right. Uh, so I, I, as I go around, every day I'm out in neighborhoods, I'm at train stations in the morning, and um, people remember me, which is, which is great, and that makes me feel good. And I, um, my message um, is really um, working for people. And my message is about uh, really affordability, opportunity, and, and security in our county. And that's what I'll be 100% focused on when I, when I go up to Albany. Okay. God willing. Any questions, Lorraine? Go ahead. I know you always got a question. The, the, no, what, what are some of the things that you feel need to be changed in Albany? So you said you want, you're willing to bring a lot of changes. Well, first and foremost, um, Westchester is, has the highest taxes um, in, in the country, uh, we need to lower property taxes, and, and we can do that. We can do that. Westchester um, does not get its fair share of school aid. Westchester gets fifty-two hundred dollars per student. Long Island averages sixty-four hundred. Uh, New York City ninety-six hundred. So mm -hmm. that's the first thing that I will be focused on: um, the school aid formula. Oh, it's nice to have someone focus on that. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and the why, why is that? Is there a formula? Yeah. There, there is. School aid is incredibly complicated, but there okay. is certain formulas, and one of the lab the labor coefficient that's assigned to Westchester is really upstate labor costs, and we all know we have downstate labor costs. Oh, okay. um, so that's okay. that's one thing. But the other issue, when I, I I talk to school board members, superintendents, and the state Department of Education also does not reimburse the schools on a regular basis. So, for instance, in Rye, I just spoke with the head of the school board. She said we're getting building aid now. That we sh that for ten years from ten years ago, Holy so God. how do you know? And I don't feel as bad for Rye. I do, but you know, what do we do in Mount Vernon and New Rochelle and Port Chester and Yonkers when they put money out and they think they're going to get reimbursed by the state and then they don't get it? Absolutely. That that comes back to every single one of us. And right. you know what it does? It hurts the kids. And you know, I'm glad that you said that because in areas like Mount Vernon, and Yonkers, and some of those areas, um, whatever is supposed to go to the county or whatever, it. You know, Mount Vernon has a little more needs than some of the other municipalities, but mm -hmm. doesn't always get their fair share of of what. And then there's cutbacks the and cutbacks county. and cutbacks. But I'm saying, especially your account, your municipalities that need it need mm -hmm. the most help, mm -hmm. they don't get it. Yeah. Well, know. I one thing that I was I'm a I'm a data person. I have a degree in chemical engineering. I like data. I like to look okay. at facts and figures mm -hmm. and and one of the um, things that in Yonkers I don't know the numbers in Mount Vernon but in Yonkers they get 70 percent um, funded by the state whereas the big um, Rochester Syracuse Utica they get 90 percent funded by the state and the reason they always say is they're like Westchester's wealthy that's what they say Westchester's wealthy and we know that some of it is but not all of it so I want to drill down on some of those numbers and be able to go back to Albany and say you say that but let me show you the numbers and this is why we should be getting more school aid in, into Westchester. So that's that, that's that'll be my first project. Okay, definitely, definitely happy about that. Go ahead. How do you feel about the Immigration uh, Act uh, with the county that they're going to vote on tomorrow? Do you know anything about that? How you do know you what? I don't. It? I don't know the. I don't know the details of it. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I think it's. Is it? Is it the one called the Immigrant Protection Act? Yes. Yes. I, can I can I come back on that one? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, ha no, I haven't well, read it. Yeah, like, don't I really know, hesitate to. You don't know. I know in in Rye um, months ago when I so I ended city council December thirty first. 
um, we we started with um, you know people called it um, sanctuary city legislation, which it wasn't. Right. Um, but we um, one of our council people started something, and what we ended up doing, you know, because one of the things I said, well, if if these are some of the things we should be doing, then it should be in our police procedure manual. Mm -hmm. like it should be a policy and procedure, not just city council says, you know, passes a resolution. Right, right. So we um, worked with the police commissioner and made some changes to our policy and in our, in our police that's you great. know, procedure oh, manual, awesome. which that, I think is what, that's you, that's you, that's what you should be doing. That's yeah, things like so that I'm, I will be interested in um, looking at, you know, what that's all about. Um, certainly, you know, I, I was on the board of a soup kitchen in the Bronx for um, four or five years, POTS, part of the solution in the mm -hmm. Bronx. And I'm involved. I've been involved with Carver Center in Port Chester. I'm involved with a small um, after-school program called Don Bosco Center. Um, mm -hmm. We where we're helping, you know, a lot of uh, some are citizens, some not. And um, we we do a lot of great work. There's a lot of need in the community. And um, you know, I'm I'm thrilled with. Um, there's I, I don't know across the county, but there's a lot going on. Uh, for instance, in Port Chester, where we're really helping a lot yeah. of those families, and right. it's really terrific. And um, so one particular program. Um, that I've been involved with is called Don Bosco Scholars, where we um, assign uh, a high school kid a mentor. They help them go through the college process. They take them to visit colleges, help them go through the financial aid process, and you know, sort of start to finish. You know, something that most kids, kids in Rye and Bronxville and other places, they have parents, they have guidance counselors who can help them, and it's been really, um, I'm really proud of it. It's been a really successful program, and it's it's really exciting to help. So there's a lot of things we need to be doing in our community to help the the underserved and right. Right. No, I was just I just wanted to piggyback off um, it was good that y'all put it in into the manual what was confusing and I'm just saying that Serena I'm not knocking because you're a Republican but it was, uh, was confusing with the Serena administration because his police department already had it in their policies not to work with ICE so what I didn't understand why it was a push now, with corrections, it was an issue. Correction was the biggest issue in this bill because what they were doing was ICE was coming to the jail and taking someone before they even went to trial for whatever <coughs> case that they had. So, you know, they, didn't, they weren't even getting their due process. It was being taken. But with county police, they already had the policy, and it was kind of confusing when Astorino was saying that... Um, he wasn't going to, you know, I'm not going to agree with it. I'm going to veto it. But you, but the policy was already yeah. with public safety, you know. And so what was the point of it then? I don't know. It, it was just well, political rhetoric and badgering <laughs> and foolishness. That's <laughs> not what we need, I would say. We don't need, we don't need a lot of no, rhetoric we don't. and, no, and we legislating don't. Right. by sound bites. I mean, right. I truly want to do things that are really going to help people not things that just sound good and i think right. sometimes we do things that sound good and and the reality is or, or redoing something that's already there and we really should be focused on the next thing because we really need to there's a lot of there's a lot of people struggling out there and um there's a lot that we can do well well i'm kind of glad that you got the nomination over piece of crap by the name of dan shore that i happen to know mm -hmm. um but that's just my personal opinion um, I know Dan Shaw. He's I an asshole. Too. Excuse me. <coughs> he's I mean, but wouldn't go that far. I, I, I would. I would. I would. <laughs> but, but when you go in with a special election, do you get endorsed by unions? And if you do, have you gotten any endorsements? Um, yes, there are a number of endorsements. I'm still waiting to hear um, about some of them. Some I've gotten, some I haven't, or some I might get, some I haven't. We're still waiting to hear. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a shortened process, so it's it's pretty intense because there's a lot to to do, and I really love being out in in neighborhoods and, and talking to people, and and I go to train stations in the morning, and it's just it's great. I mean, you have to to do this, you have to want to be out there and talk to the people, and that, that's what it's all about. Your kids are in favor. They they are. I have a couple in particular that are really uh, excited about it. Um, but I talked to all of them before I decided, and obviously my husband. It's a big decision, and mm -hmm. you know people ask me a lot, like, why don't we have better people in politics? And there's a lot of reasons, but it it puts a big strain on, on your family, and um, you have to be ready to uh, have a microscope on you and also on your family. Mm -hmm. And um, not everybody's willing to do that. I have a pretty thick skin. Uh, not completely thick, but I have a pretty yeah. thick skin. You have to have a pretty thick skin because, you know, the, the, 
with social media now, people really right, right, do right, right. go Dangerous. after you. You could you could say, you know, I'm going to pay your taxes and put all your kids through college, and they, you know, will go after you or something. So right, it right, really, right. and that's what, you know, I just I want to get beyond that. I, I think there's too much partisan bickering, and I think if we can just speak, and I just love the message. I'll go back to the the mother of six that was speaking earlier, and she just talked about communicating and loving, and you know, I think that's a great message because. I, when I spent on my time on city council, I often went to talk to the people that I thought I might not agree with or might be on the other side of an issue first. And there's always something you can learn, and I find you can always find common ground and, and work together. Absolutely. And I, I me and, me and Reggie worked together <laughs> great yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we had a great time. And nobody so would ever thought Lafayette. me and Reggie Lafayette would have a great time at an event. <laughs> and we did. We had a great time. So yeah, I believe in love. I mean, could love ever into politics? <laughs> <laughs> we can try. Good love well, well, you got it. This good, but you sound like you have a gentle soul. I do. I mean, I'm 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 pretty tough. I, uh, you know, I I as I said earlier, I grew up. I, I have four sisters uh, and one brother, and I went off to college at 18, and I, I went to a, a college that was uh, four to one men, men to women, and <laughs> I chose a major chemical engineering that was wow. mostly men. And my last two uh, summers of, of college, I worked in a plastics plant. Um, wear hard hat and safety shoes and safety glasses, and there was 300 men in that plant, and myself, an, another female Holy engineer, crap. and two secretaries, and, and that was it. So that's a pretty intense environment to be walking through that plant, and it's all men. But so then you can I handle survived, Albany. You can handle yeah, Albany. And then, then I went. I went to Wall Street, which is another male ah. bastion. I mean, there's mm. more women there now, but I went um, in the 80s. It, it was it was definitely different, and on a trading floor. That's that's certainly a. You know, surviving on a trading floor on, on Wall Street. I, I'm proud of that. And then I have four sons. I live in a, in a man's world right now, too, in my <laughs> own house. And thank God for my daughter, Alex, if you're watching this. I love you. I Aww. love you, boys, too. But um, we you know, you've got to be – I think you can be tough but also have a gentle soul. I, thank you for saying that. I really appreciate that. We have a, a comment from the audience. Um, Danny Barnaby said um, – you sound like a Democrat. How do you distinguish yourself <laughs> as a Republican? <laughs> there was a reporter at News 12 last time I ran that every time he talked to me, he said, you really do sound, you don't sound like a Republican to me. You know, well, I, you know, I, I'm a Republican because I really believe in, in personal responsibility, <coughs> personal initiative, yep. working hard. Yep. I do believe in limited government, but I do think government has, has a role. Mm -hmm. um, and one of our biggest roles is to keep people safe and uh, help those who cannot help themselves, which is another passion of mine. We haven't gotten into substance abuse and mental health, but um, that's a big passion of mine in helping those, um, particularly in mental health of those who can't help themselves and the developmentally disabled. Thank you. Um, I mean, not, that's not, not that but it's I, you, but you know, that's your passion. Yeah. Yeah. But I, 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 I reject the, the, the party labels. I just think, uh, you know, people like to put people in a box because they like to try to understand you. And, you know, I have very nuanced positions. I was um, I do a guest appearance on the uh, Bob Marone Morning Show on oh WBOX yeah. on Tuesdays, so um, I was teasing that you would be on the show, mm -hmm. and he was like, and he um, he said um, you know a lot of people um, have it's like for like assume that Shelly Myers is just gonna win, and they said, and he said they gotta watch out for you, you got a, a strong candidate, and he spoke highly of you. Oh, that's um, nice. Yeah, he said, Thank they, you. yeah. The paper did too. Yeah, so I just wanted to uh, throw that out. Thank you, I appreciate that. Going, yeah. I so, appreciate um, that. what other issues are important to you? What other? I know you. You know, we talked about the school and everything. What? What other things that you think that you were, you know, your platform or you were? Um, well, opportunity is, is big with me, and an opportunity to me means having a. Um, good business environment. Um, I think the the small businesses in Westchester, mid mid-sized businesses, are really the backbone of our economy. And you know, I, I really believe in, in streamlining um, permitting processes so people can start new businesses, getting rid of some of the red tape, um, because that's really um, to have a vibrant economy and have jobs are really what is is the most important thing and and then we can help you know if we have tax revenue and people have jobs we can help take care of those who, who as i said earlier can't help themselves and i think there's it it worries me when i go around the district and you know so i'll tell you a couple of things i've heard um one real estate guy said to me uh, my biggest tenant 1100 people the business is moving to georgia another man said to me i own eight dunkin donuts and by the end of this year we're gonna have kiosks 
at the front counters. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's upsetting to me. And in particular, you know, I have, I have teenage boys and, you know, I think these kids need that first job. So I worry more about the, the teen unemployment and, and getting that first job so they understand responsibility. And that can build on, on to other things. But if we have businesses leaving, it's going to be hard to, to make those things happen. So I really, that's one thing. And, uh, and security overall, as I said, is really one of the most important things our government does. And um, I, am, I started a drug and alcohol coalition in Rye. I started working on 2011 because I thought there was a big problem with marijuana. Um, in 2015, I got federal funding for it from the Drug Free Communities Grant Money, which is a federal program, $125,000 a year. And in those intervening years, we had six children die of drug overdoses wow. in Rye. And it's, it's, yeah. it's heartbreaking. It's so heartbreaking. Another, um, another listener, uh, Luis, um, she said that is really the conservative movement of the GOP of the early 80s. Can you remain loyal to those values under Trumpism? D does she mean... Pers personal guess, responsibility the, and, and limited government about, and, yeah. and low taxes yeah. and the thing yeah. that like they said makes you sound like a democrat or <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean i i feel strongly about my principles I, I you know i am getting support from senate republicans and i you know i said this is who i am these are the things i believe in and you know take it or leave it and when i get up there i'm going to speak out and if i agree with you on things and you know i look i, I say to people send me up there because you know, I want to work with them and get them to pass some of those things that are now you know, maybe stymied in the Senate that I think that we really do need. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I want to give you a chance um, before I usually sometimes almost forget. Um, for people that are listening to you, they're seeing you for the first time, right. they're hearing you for the first time, they want to know more about you, maybe how they can support you or, you know, volunteer or whatever. How do they reach you? social media, websites? Uh, website. My website is juliekillian.com, J-U-L-I-E-K-I-L-L-I-A-N, as in Nancy, dot com. So, yeah, go on the website, check me out. You can email us. Um, our office number's on there, and we'd lo I'd love to hear from people. I, I have gotten a lot of um, requests for where I'm in various positions, a lot of people wanting to volunteer. I, I, I feel really good about the, the impact that I've had so far and, and people being excited about the race. Uh, are there going to be a debate? There's lots of mm. debates. We have the Yonkers uh, Chamber of Commerce breakfast. I believe there's a News 12 debate. Okay. There is a League of Women Voters debate. And, okay. I, you know, we'll have to get those all up on the website. I don't know all the, oh, okay. the dates. Mm. But I, um, the Yonkers City Council is, um, I think, m March 20th, I believe, in the morning. So, yeah, there's, a, there's quite there a few, is. actually. Okay. okay. Okay, good. That's good. Yeah, that's great. That's great. People should hear the different yeah. candidates and, and, and make their decision and I hope people will be open minded. You know, I No, I didn't think they did debates in special elections. I just thought they rushed through it. <laughs> 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 just to get it over with. But that's good that they haven't yeah. that they're having debates. I think that's that that's very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. How have people received you? How has good. Been good. Really good. I you know, I um I think people, um, it's interesting, I think a lot of Republicans, when Rob Estorino lost, are feeling, um, some are feeling a little bit lost. I think they uh, feel, some have, s yeah, and some have said to me, not, nothing against Democrats per se, but they're feeling like there's a very liberal, liberal policies are coming and they're worried about people are not going to be focused enough on you know some of the things i'm talking about affordability and opportunity mm -hmm. and um so i i um I, I think i've made some good inroads and isn't uh, isn't affordability and opportunity like liberal policies you know i mean when people talk about um houses um person making a hundred thousand dollars a year but can't buy a house in westchester you know um opportunity opportunity to move up the ladder mm -hmm. whether you're women or minorities isn't that you know or that or is that just a label put on it but we all believe in um opportunity but we just don't agree on um how to get to the opportunity uh, exactly i think that i think that's you know? it i think i think a lot of us want want the same things and it's it's ha how you get there and we, we may right. uh, disagree on and you know one 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 big thing that i didn't mention that i 
would love to try to focus on more is, is corruption in New York. I, I think there is a corruption tax yeah. in New York, which takes money out of our pockets uh, every day. Did you see the stats about how it costs two and a half billion dollars to build one mile of subway track in New York City? It costs 900 million in San Francisco and 500 million in Boston. Why is that? Right. Well, I have another um, wow. uh, question from the audience. Um, Ken Bright, he says, how does she feel about efforts in bringing criminal justice reform where humane services is given mental her me mental health services are efficiently uh, efficiently given as well as bail reform for those nonviolent crimes um, that's a lot in that question right right right, right, uh, right. I don't know if we have time so um one um, I, I feel strongly about criminal justice reform I was very much a, um, a proponent of raise the age uh, and I know that we're still we're still working out a lot of the details of that. Um, I have been um, trying to help the, um, you guys are familiar with the youth shelter in Westchester, mm -hmm. Christian Philemon mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. I think that's an amazing program and it makes me sad they only have 12 beds and I'm, uh, I'm we're, they're having a, a, a gala soon to, to raise some money and I'm trying to help them because I really think programs like that where that are alternatives to incarceration, you know, and if someone is, is is, is violent and, and multiple offenses, that's a, that's a different story. And, and I know because we want to protect people, we want to protect our cor corrections officers too. Um, uh, but some of these kids that just make stupid mistakes um, really don't, don't need to go to jail. And um, I, I met I really like you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. No, I met, I met the kids. So cool. I met the kids from the youth shelter from Westchester. It was probably three years ago, and they had, someone had done an art program with them, and they had an art show at Rye Art Center. So I went, and um, I was talking to all the kids, and it's just to hear them speak, and they said, well, we di I didn't understand the importance of, of education and how I dress and being polite, and, and one kid was getting out in the next month because they stay in there, I think, three, six, nine months, sometimes up to mm -hmm. a year. And he, he was getting out in a month, and he had three younger brothers. And he talked to me about <coughs> how he was bowing to go and help them and make sure they didn't go down the same path. So there's just, you know, there's I, I kids in in some of the more affluent communities just have have, you know, a different um, sort of more more. Sometimes I mean, usually you have parents that you have a roof over your head. You're not as worried about the financials, but when right. you're in a house where your mom is focused on getting food on the table and hopefully having your roof over your head, and she may not be worried about if you have a learning disability and things aren't going so crazy at school, like I, it's difficult. And when the mom brings back to the mom earlier with a single mom, <coughs> there's a lot of single moms out there that are struggling, and we really need to help them and and the kids. So um, there was a lot. I didn't answer all the questions right, right, in right, that. Right, right, right. There, uh, can I come back? And Absol I can absolutely. Talk? absolutely. Absolutely. Two things. One, um, um, you're welcome to come back. Thank and you. You're welcome to also. I would love to have you and Shelly on together. Right? If that's you know if something we can, both if we can agree. figure it out in right. the between right. now and the 24th, that would be great. And um, uh, just so you know, there are a lot of comments to me need to read. That um, sounds to me that she's a Democrat. You like sound that you sound. <laughs> they have a lot of Democrats. Well, I, I just well, Republicans are people too. Just well, we're, not, we're, not, we're not talking feelings. people, but they're saying that you know you sound more like a Democrat than, and these are Democrats that are you know. Yeah, that's that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. You know, I one I have nuanced views, and I don't I don't like to be put one in a box well, and have a label. Person, one, person, one person did ask though, how do how do you differ from the Democratic ideology? Like you know. Republicans and Democrats, you know, have different ways of going about things, certain things. What they hear more question. Democrat um, ideas than Republicans. So, what, what do you, as a Republican, how do you differentiate well, yourself? Well, you know, I, I would say I believe in in equal opportunity and not necessarily equal outcomes because it really is dependent on you. You help someone, give them a hand up, mm -hmm. and and help them. And sometimes it's just how hard they work and how much effort they put into to moving themselves ahead. But I do believe in, in equal opportunity, but not equal outcome. And, so, and I think sometimes, um, you know, I, I hate to, you know, I would say maybe sometimes the liberal point of view is like everyone should, everyone should be equal and everyone should have all the same things. And I, you know, I think we should equal opportunity, but not, not equal outcomes. Okay. Um, anything that I didn't ask you any last, you know, anything, last word, anything you want to, you know, tell the people, get them, 
just you know I'm I, I want to go to up to Albany and and you know shake things up a bit up there and um, I'm, I'm an Albany outsider and I would come up to Albany with the perspective of a mom the mother of five a local elected official community advocate and bring that perspective uh, to everything I do in Albany. And I think we need people up there that have been down in the trenches experiencing things. And um, Albany, people, there's a lot of people that have been in Albany a long time. And I think we need some change. I, I believe in term limits, because I think that will help get more change up there. But we need- You don't believe in term limits? Yeah. yeah. You're a Republican that believes in term limits? Oh my God, give her a hand. <laughs> give her a hand. <laughs> give her a hand. <laughs> Any, any politician for the reason for me is all right. I said I'm going to limit myself to 10 years. If there you, you send go. me there, God will. There you go. Because some guys up there, you know. Retired. Maybe. Yeah, it becomes a, about a pension. You know. Yeah. You got yeah, people walking around with oxygen masks and tanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> no, true, okay. though. I got, you know, just give me two more years. Just give me yeah. two. And any institution get can get old after time. You need fresh faces. You need fresh ideas fresh and, and ideas, yeah. fresh initiatives. So. Send me to Albany, guys, and I will work hard for you every single day. All right. All and right. Now, Matt, can't be mad at that. Lastly, um, <laughs> last comment, um, Brian says, nice point of view. My wife is running for city council, a city council member as a mother of seven. And she's a wow. leader now. So I know the campaign time can be tough. And then he said success. Oh, that that's so nice. Wow. And mother of seven. That's impressive. Yes. yes you yes. go, girl. Oh, and... Um, <laughs> I'd like to le welcome Reggie Lafayette to the program. Hey, <laughs> Reggie. <laughs> Hi, Reggie. <laughs> Hello, friend. We've met a couple of times. I don't know if you remember. I talked about your youth shelter. I know you're on the board there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see. See? Well, we'd like to thank you for coming. Like I said, taking your time out. And, and, thank and, you. And coming and introducing yourself and definitely welcome me back. And I said if there's a possibility to get you and Shelly on the same show so people can see, you know, the two together, um, we would definitely love to make that happen. Yeah. Thanks so much. I and enjoyed it. Okay. And thank you to Molly because she was very receptive and she helped get you here, and we really appreciate it. You know that 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 she helped us. She's a wonderful person, and, she is. and you, you got a good person with you in the campaign. Yeah, that that helps. Having good yeah. people support you is really important. So thank you so much. No, I really you. enjoyed meeting thank all you. of you, yes, and I can't so wait to come back. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Um, a couple of people on the check in. Um, we have, uh, like I said, Reggie Lafayette just tuned in. We have Dawn Dobbs. We have um, Ken Bright, who asked a few questions. Um, we have, um, I can't think of his real name. I'm going by, I see his Facebook name. Akination Arara. Um, out there, I think he's out in Vegas. What's up? Oh, we got the man with the plan in the, the place to be. Um, <laughs> um, trying to get every Jack Toon or Tooney, T O O N E. Jack Toon. Yes, yes. He's tuned in. Um, Jeff Ford is tuned in. Michael Holt, um, I'm running on fire department. Um, he's tuned in. Uh, ben Fox, Melanie Mems McKee, my homegirl from Atlanta. Shout out to you and Reggie. Uh, Max Maxwell's in. Uh, Kenneth Chamberlain is in the building. Um, Judge Adrian Armstrong's tuned in. Lamont Norris. Uncle Frank. Frank Trulio Jr. Uh, Petrina M. Johnson. Uh, Kevin Boyd. Um, and I think that's all the new ones that I did see. Um, I didn't get to get to everybody's question, but um, we will have her back on. Come out um, and see, we Ken. Just, just Kaboom! Guess who stepped up in the room to camera yeah. shot? Oh, now, yeah, now yeah, you yeah, want to yeah. get camera shot? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, thanks, cousin. He said, "Love the content. Appreciate you, fam, for tuning in from Vegas." Word up! We got Kenneth Chamberlain in the building. In the building, in a place to be. The man, the myth, the legend. No. How you doing, brother? <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I'm in good company. <laughs> the one, the one they always mix. The Damon, him, him and Damon up his brothers. Yeah, I don't know why. Yo, but you know what, though? I will say that, though. When I first started with Black Westchester in 2014, there were people that saw you and was like, yeah, yeah, here's the guy that got the paper with you, that do the thing with you. 
I said, no, no, that's Damon. Mm -hmm. But they would, they, would, they would mix it all up. And then and Damon would be, that's the guy whose father got killed, right? I'd be like, no, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of, no. I mean, listen, I, I, when people walk up to me now and they go, oh, Damon Jones, I say yes. How are you? Sandy Barney, Sandy Barney used to say, clap your hands, hands for Kenneth, Kenneth Chamberlain. Chamberlain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. <laughs> Word up. So what's going on, my brother? What's going on? <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's always a pleasure to come here, you know. Mm -hmm. um, always a pleasure to have and, you, too. And, you know, I, I enjoy listening to the show even when I'm, when I'm not here, but I'm here because it's time for me to update you guys on my father's case. Okay. Um, March 22nd, we're going to have oral arguments at, at the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. Mm -hmm. Now, all of the information as far as the case surrounding the killing of my father has been handed in because you know that they found in favor of the city in the first civil trial so we filed an appeal mm -hmm. so now it's time for the oral arguments where we will now the attorneys will now argue why we should prevail why they should overturn the original decision that was in favor of the city of white plains now what a lot of people may not understand with that case is that the judge originally stripped the case down to barely nothing at all. Everything that we were going for, she actually uh, did not allow in, into the trial. She took the supervisors away. She took his medical history away. She took the fact that he was called a nigga away. She did allow the fact that uh, he was shot with a beanbag shotgun, but only for context, context only, just to set up the scene. And she allowed audio to be played of my father cursing at the police officers, but she did not allow audio of the police officers cursing at my father. Mm -hmm. So how is that fair? How is that full? How is that fair? So we're hoping now that that it's in the hand of three appellate judges that they're going to look at it and hopefully overturn the decision. Okay, okay. So, so again, like I said, March 22nd, we're going to um, be at the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. I'm asking for people to, to come out, to show up. Keep it over. I'm pulling. I'm, um, I'm trying to find a flyer. I'm you found to, it or no? No, I didn't oh. just now. I'm, I couldn't pull up your other page. I don't know why. Yeah, so. And it's not on your page, your page. Uh, well, a lot of it is on my page, but I've been posting so much on there right now. Right, 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 right. To really try to push, to really push to get people to see it so they will come out and, and stand with my family and I. You know, um. I, I Presence say, in the courtroom is important. I, I want to say something on that too. Um, at, you know, as a supporter, yo, we, you know, a lot of have, people have come out through various times. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And in the beginning, there was a lot of push, but as as time went on, I saw, and I wasn't able to make it to a few, but I saw less and less and less people. And I believe that that's our problem. We have to fight this all the way. We have to all stay engaged. We have to we have to come out in numbers, more numbers than before, for them to take us serious. So y you may have come out before, you know what I'm saying? But it's very important for you to come out again now. Mm -hmm. We all need to stand with this man and, 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 and his fight for justice. Anybody who believes it, we need to stand there. We need to put our money where our mouth is. You know, I read all the stuff, and I'm an administrator of one of his pages, and I read all the comments of support. But a lot, I'm going to be real, though. There's a lot of y'all I see support. I don't see y'all out there. And I'm just keeping it real. And this is from me, not from him. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I, yo, I need to see people put their money where their mouth is and stand. Show up. Show up. You know what I'm saying? Make your, make your presence felt. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's, that's just, that's, like I said, that's A.J. Woodson, Black Westchester. That's not Kenneth Chamberlain. 
And I just needed to say that real quick. Well, 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 look. Here's here's my thing. Originally, uh, you know, just to be perfectly honest, in the beginning, when I didn't see people show up or turn out to these things, I used to get upset. I really did. You know, but then I said, you know what? I can't focus on that. I will be thankful for the people who do show up. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's that's really all that, that I can be grateful for. Um, right. So I've been I've been shooting out emails. I've been sharing posts on Facebook. I've been asking people to share the posts. Um, I've had people contact me and tell me that they will be present March 22nd at 10 a.m. So I'm I'm hoping that these people show up. I mean, I want standing room only inside the courtroom. And, and like you said, yes, it's very important that these judges see presence from the, from the community. Mm -hmm. You know, and the only other conversation that I've had with people sometimes, and, and Damon and I have talked about this, is that I just think it's interesting that many of the people who claim to support me in this fight are the same people who voted to have the same people put back in office in right. the city in White Plains. Right who actually are against me and don't want to see me be victorious. So I'm not really understanding the logic behind that. But the bigger issue here is, like I say, one of the problems that it is is that it's not my problem until it's my problem. Right. That's usually the, the, the issue when you talk about things like this. You know, When you want to talk about maybe senior wellness or you want to talk about homelessness or people going hungry or or even mental illness, you know, it's a little easier to to address those issues. But when you start talking about police misconduct, brutality, criminality, or extrajudicial killings, and summary executions of unarmed uh, individuals, now people begin to get a little nervous because they fear some type of retaliation from law enforcement or just from the government itself. Absolutely, absolutely. No, I just wanted to, you know, I think I, you know, me and Kenny, we talk all the time. And one of the, one of the most um, heartening thing is to, is to fight for justice. And after knowing all we know, right, black folks in White Plains turn around and they vote Roach back into office. That is the most insulting thing that can happen to the death of Kenneth Chamberlain Sr. What is the reason? And, you know, and, and I love everybody that come out and support him. But what is the reason to march? What is the reason to hold candles? What is the reason to um, rally? You know, because is it a just makes us feel good? You know, it makes us it makes us feel like we're doing something. But on that day, on that important day, and that is election day, to send a message to not just not just Mayor Roach, but every politician in Westchester County that has turned their back on justice for so many families and there's no municipality that is immune none there's no municipality that's immune it doesn't it and then you then you go into the voting booth and you put the man back in mm. office you Over, know overwhelmingly too well overwhelmingly yeah. not not Even not just that think about this Think coach. about he this, and 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 I and I'm able to say this because nobody pulls my strings, nobody pays for this radio station, but me and AJ. Nobody, nobody. So I'm I'm able to say this here. If that was a Jewish person, right? If that was a Jewish person, and he was called some type of Jewish anti-Semite yeah. name, right? Mayor Roach would not be in office today. Right? He yeah. would not he would not be in office today. They're still right now, and I'm gonna talk about this later, they're still making 
black Democrats denounced Minister Farrakhan for something he was alleged to said 20 years ago. 20 years ago. Black politicians are being punked out for something allegedly, he allegedly said, or it was misinterpreted what he said. Right? But, but here we are. A man is called nigger. Shot and killed. Right. Not, not just men called nigger, then taunted. Shot and killed. And black folks just blindly run into, run right into that voting booth and put Roach back in. So he says, so, 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 what, so what are you going to do? So, so if I'm a cop, well, hell, I could call another black man a nigger. Ain't nothing going to happen to me mm -hmm. because nothing happened, to, nothing happened to those cops. You know, when are we going to wake up? And then the family's still fighting, you know, and the judge takes all that out. Why? Because, because we, don't, we don't show a continuance of discontent with what's going on, right? So why, why should the judge make them calling Mr. Chamberlain a factor when there's no even pushback on local politicians? So, hey, well, if, if the people don't care because they put this politician back in, then it, it's not a fact that shouldn't even be in the court. And then people will say, oh, my God, it's so horrible what they did to your father, Kenny. It's, it's, so, it's so horrible that the judge wouldn't, wouldn't let the, the, the case un hear them call them nigger. Yeah, but you heard it, but you put the mayor back in that didn't do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. and you so you're just as bad as the damn you have, judge. You have black officials, in, elected officials in White Plains support roles. Well, you course. got a couple, of, got a couple of comments from the people. Um, Sandy has a couple of comments for you. She said, terrible. The judge narrowed it down to the last few minutes of the episode. Totally um, totally biased and unfair. Um, we are with you, Kenneth. Um, a couple of people put hashtag white, pri white privilege. Um, D. Wilson said the judge took the fact that he was human being with right and took his rights away. Um, uh, many prayers. What doesn't come out in the wash usually comes out in the rinse. Um, that's what Louise said. Um, uh, Sandy's telling everybody March 22nd, 10 o'clock. Um, Ken, Ken Bright said, yeah, these are, th these are Negroes for you, mm -hmm. while, while Damon was talking. Um, um, he said, and he also said pain will make changes. Um, complicit people are everywhere. Um, and there's just a lot more. Um, um, those, those are just a sample of the comments for you. Well, <laughs> one thing I, I, I definitely want to say, because when people do talk about what type of support that I get, do I get support? I most certainly do. Absolutely. I, I'm not going to say that I'm not receiving any type of support. One of the things that I do tell people, though, is that 85% of my support base is white. Yeah. It's not black. It's white. I was surprised when I first saw that in 2014. You know, um, and I say that because a lot of times people try to make it seem like, oh, well, he doesn't like white people. Or they'll try to say he's anti-law enforcement. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't like cops. But again, like I said, 85% of my support base is white. Out of the black people that support me, 90% are women, mm -hmm. not men, wow. women. The women come out and they support me. The women come out. And I, and, and I attribute that, number one, to that women look at it more from an emotional perspective. They, but not only that, it's, it's more of an emotional intelligence type of thing. So they're, they're identifying with this and they're saying, wow, that could be my son, that could be my father, that could be my brother, you know, that could be my uncle. And, and they, so they'll come out and they'll stand in that front line because they know that it's bigger than Kenneth Chamberlain Sr. And I keep trying to tell people that. Nothing that I can do from this point or the day that he was killed will ever bring him back. So it's my push to affect change because I don't want you to go through what I went through. Right. I don't want anyone to ever get that type of phone call in the morning where somebody is saying the police shot and killed you your loved one mm -hmm. because you're lost 
you don't know what to do. Um, someone talked to me about mourning my father's death. I said, what is that? I have not mourned my father's death um, because I've been moving and fighting from the very first day. And Damon can tell you that because Damon was right there with me. And not just for yourself, though. Everything that I've covered, you've been down in the Bronx with the Ramali, Ramali's family. You've been with this family. You've been with that family. You, you've been, I mean, even when Ray Ned Turner um, mm -hmm. died in Mount Vernon and her husband was going through it, mm -hmm. you stepped out and, and, and consoled him the, the loss of a family member. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, 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 like, you know, again, I always say, you know, we always say what we would do. And <laughs> I, 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 I hope to never have to find out, but, yo, I, I, I would like to think I would do what you're doing <laughs> if, if that ever happened, but I... I can't promise that that would be my mind state, though. It's, I it's mean, there's so they, you could be so after police right now. You, mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying? Like a lot of people would be. Um, and it's, and it's going back to the white people, the, the first two things that I saw in 2014 when I came back, Cynthia took me down to Eric Garner's funeral in Brooklyn, and I saw so many white people with signs about stop this racism and all that. I like it was more white people out there. And, I was just like, yo, I was blown away. Mm -hmm. And then um, one of the two things for you, I think down at the DOJ or one of the two things we did in the city, mm -hmm. they were 75% of the uh, people out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? They came down, they came out, they, they had their signs, they, you know, whatever. You know, we, we need to represent. We always talk about we want, we want this change. You know, we're tired of how these things are, but we don't come out and support these situations. And like you said, the courtroom needs to be Full, but not only just the courtroom, the press needs to see the outside full. Mm -hmm. Like everybody can't get in the courtroom, but yo, the press need the press. They they deal with numbers. If that outside was packed and the, the courtroom had standing room only, where you had to look in the door and the, the room outside was packed, the press would be covering it so much more, and everybody else. No, would have wait, to wait, wait, wait. The press don't cover shit. Well, that's, no, that's, no, that's, no, that's, no, 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 no. The press, the press doesn't cover anything. He, he, he got a million men out there. The press ain't gonna cover that. They don't want. They, they don't want. They don't want. This is this is this is why we started. What we started because we know the press doesn't. The press hasn't covered the Chamberlain shooting correctly since the man was killed. Honest to God, since the man was killed, News Twelve, Fios, Journal News, since the man was killed. You know, I know I got a lot of friends over there in, 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 in the journal news. We, we respect y'all to death. But, but, but I know the main editor take things out. Mm -hmm. Right? Y'all do your best, but before it get online and before it get to, to the print, the main editor is taking things out. News 12 has yet to play, unless I'm wrong, the cops call Mr. Chamberlain a nigga. I don't think they've ever played it. Right. Um, they did. They they, they, did they spoke on it. it but, but see, it, right. But it's different when you hear it. Right. Because mm -hmm. I think we we might be the only person that actually consistently put it out there. Consistently. Well, well, you got uh, democracy, the, 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 now. The democracy, democracy now. now. Amy yeah. Goodman right. and Juan Gonzalez right. definitely I, played I actually, it. I actually played their video on Black mm -hmm. West. Festival. They were instrumental in helping me get uh, my father's case out there. Okay. Juan Gonzalez was actually the one who found out the name of the shooter. Okay. He did an investigative report and found out who actually shot and killed my father because they were keeping it such a secret. Right. And you ask yourself, well, why it's the secrecy around who the shooter was? He's a police officer. Why the secrecy? You know, and they tried to say everything from they didn't want his life to be threatened or anything like that. But then when you really check it out and you find out, you find out that it came down to the fact that police officer Anthony Corelli had other charges against him in civil court where he beat two Jordanian brothers and was calling them ragheads. So uh, Commissioner Chong once made this statement about where there's smoke, there's fire. So that was smoke right there. So had you dealt with that situation then, maybe, just maybe, my father would be alive today. But you didn't. You turned a blind eye to it, and you let it go. And they want to talk about what a great police officer he is. 
They want to talk about how he, I believe they're saying he has, or he's suffering from PTSD right now after the shooting of my father. I don't believe that, okay? I don't believe that for one minute, you know? Um, one of them was allowed to retire. Didn't one of them retire so far? Or did he leave? Or? Well, you had a couple of the officers that were involved retire now. Okay. Um, so, and then you had one officer, the one that was alleged to have called my father a nigga, uh, die in a car accident. Right. Um, well, which he said he didn't do it. Yeah, and he said that he did not do it, and and... To be perfectly honest, I don't know if if he said it either because listen to the audio, right? And it's on my page where my father is being called a nigga. Then Westchester County DA Janet D. Fior said that it was used, but it was used as a tactic to, to distract, distract my father, right. which is one of the most asinine comments or statements I've ever heard. But she took it and said that it happened at a window, that the officer at the back window right. called my father a nigga. Listen to the audio. You hear my father say, don't do that. Don't do that, officer. And then he says, I'm telling you I'm okay. Right. And right after he said that, you hear, I don't give a fuck, nigga. Right. right. Okay? So how can that be at the window? Right. And it was the same but place. she was smart. She was tactical. Right. Because now, think about it. If an officer says, I don't give a fuck, nigga, open the door. And then you take the door off the hinges. You taser him. You beanbag. And then you shoot him. She didn't want that word nigga at the door. Right. Because then it had been a game of hate crime. Yes. All the way. You see, Then they, so then they tease his medical service. Yelling out simplify or whatever. Well, that yeah, they, they they mocked his military yeah. service. They they did all of that. I mean, you name it, they did it. For 93 minutes, they tortured my father. Okay? And like I tell people, at that time, I was 45 years old. I said, in, in 45 years, I had never heard my father sound so afraid in, in, in all my life. Somebody said um, it's inappropriate still. They don't care if it was at the window or the door. It was Correct. inappropriate. It was an inappropriate period. Correct. And when we tried to admit it into evidence in the civil proceedings, the judge did not allow it. And in fact, people walked out of the courtroom when she said she wasn't going to allow it. And she said, oh, it's only a word. Yeah. This, and you people know, got up and walked out. You know, let me tell you, that's... What, what what the hell is that her name? Um, Judge Cybell. Oh, so Judge Cybell is one of the racist damn judges in the world. I mean, this is not the only case. Yeah, because we've gotten we've gotten letters. We, we've gotten from, letters from, about from, her from black from, 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 from different other different federal cases, mm -hmm. and, and I'm on record to say, and I really don't care. <laughs> she is one of the most racist judges in the world. But but see, here we go again. You know. And I and I say and I don't I don't say this out of hate. I say this out of love, man. If if the, if if there's no pushback from from our elected officials, from our black elected officials, then what is the point of having you in office? I'm 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 still. We got the poor people's campaign coming up. We got the poor people's campaign coming up. So, and and I think that we. I mean. This this works right into what they're talking about, right, right, right. I just because bring them in you know the conversation. Yeah. yeah, I mean they could come in the conversation. They on it. Who, who? Yeah, come on in. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? How are you? Yes, yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Have a seat. And you have <laughs> and you have in front of you your computer. You can sign into your social media and tell everybody which you know and interact but with everybody and everything. You know, I just you know I just want to call and then we're gonna move on, poor people's campaign because I need I need five minutes at the end of the show, all right. because I have to I gotta get something off my chest. All right. <laughs> um, but oh, snap. yeah, everybody everybody oh my god what is, what is he talking about? But where 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 are they at? You know I mean where where are they at? 
and, and and I think I wrote, you wrote some. I wrote something, you know, when 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 a black man's called a nigga in Westchester, right? There's no kumbaya moment, right? There's no kumbaya moment when everybody come together, right? They just like, oh my God, you know, what is Damon gonna say? What is Kenny gonna say, right? But when there's a swastika on a on a on a dumpster in the back of a school, mm -hmm. there's so many preachers from all these different denominations standing there denouncing the swastika, right? Correct. You can't even fit them in the in the picture. Correct. You can't fit them in the picture. I mean, black, white politicians they all want to get this photo op to denounce the squat the swat sticker on a dumpster or a side of a school but when a black man in westchester is called nigger and killed by police you can't get one politician in the photo and i had that conversation with mayor rose i said to him i said you said that racism and bigotry will not be tolerated in your city he said that's correct I said, you said that when they painted that swastika sticker at the school at SUNY Purchase and on the Bronx River Parkway entry. He said, correct. I said, all these pastors came out from all these different denominations. I said, everybody was out there denouncing this. He says, yes. I said, but where were you when a black man was mocked, taunted, called a nigger, and killed in his home? You didn't say that then. He said, oh, because we had a lawsuit pending. No, we did not, Mayor Roach, not at that time. I had not filed at that time. So there was no lawsuit pending. And then I made the statement, and, and I'll go on record as saying it again. I said if Kenneth Chamberlain Sr.'s name was Kenneth Greenberg, Kenneth Cohen, this would be over. We wouldn't be having this discussion right now. Because they would have moved on, they would have wanted the community to begin to heal, and we wouldn't have this issue right now. You see, so when we say that race and class play a role in how cases are dealt with in this city, <coughs> they most certainly do. And this is proof positive. The killing of Kenneth Chamberlain Sr. is proof because for you to wait five months before you even acknowledge my family or give us any type of condolences, is an issue. I don't care if you're the mayor, you're a human being. How could you not reach out to a family who just lost a loved one in a tragedy like that? You know, for the police commissioner, before even conducting an investigation to say that the shooting was justified, how dare you? For the Westchester County DA, who is now the chief judge on the New York State Court of Appeals, <laughs> the promise of full and fair investigation. But what did you present to the grand jury? What did you present? And then when you was, the question was asked, what about the racial slur? What about the fact that they called Mr. Chamberlain a nigger before they killed him? She said, yes, it was used. And it shouldn't be used by anyone. But it was used as a tactic to distract Mr. Chamberlain. At that time, you had a black man on the White Plains Common Council, Ben Boykins, who never said a word. Mm. Never said a word. You see, so my thing is, is that when I'm looking at leadership out there, it's not so much black versus white. It's who's the right person for the job? Who's the right person, person for the position? Who's going to get in there and who's going to do the job correctly and have the best interest at heart of all of the people or the communities that they claim they serve? And we're not seeing that out there. And when I say leadership is compromised, leadership must change, and these people look at me and they're like, oh, well, you know, we support you, we support you. And then Mayor Roach comes out, smiles, shakes some hands, gives a few little certificates out and proclamations, and you go out and you vote for him and put him right back in office after you saw how he really did not handle this situation properly. But I don't want to take up too much more of your time. March 22nd, please, Second Circuit Court of Appeals, we need to pack that courtroom out inside and outside. Absolutely. It starts at 10 o'clock, and there will be three judges hearing this, 
And um, they may give us a decision that day. They may not. We don't know. But out of those three judges, at least two have to side with us, if not all three. So, you know, thank you guys for having me, and I'm going to get out of your way right now. You Thank you, my brother. Uh, you can stay if you, you want to. I, I, I want our, our guest to introduce introduce herself. Hi, good evening. Uh, <laughs> God willing, I'll be there on the 22nd. So yeah. thanks for Thank you. That. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks so much for having me here. My name is Joya Colon Yeah, but yeah, 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 so you yeah. talk right into yeah, the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, is this better? Yes, yeah, you absolutely. Go. So thank you so much for having me here. My name is Joya Colon Berezin, and I'm a minister in the United Church of Christ. I serve a church in Scarsdale called the Scarsdale Congregational Church. Okay. And uh, we were invited, well, I was invited to share a little bit about the Poor People's Campaign. We have an event here in Westchester coming up on March 18th at 2 p.m. in the Church of the Highlands in White mm -hmm. Plains. Okay. And just here to share a little bit more, or if you guys have any questions. Now, now you, you said poor people's campaign is this, um, Tell Chris, I don't want in the same um, theme of what Martin Luther King was talking about before he got killed. He he was talking about a poor people's campaign. You got it. So this is the 50th year anniversary of the original launch of the poor people's campaign. It happened in December 1967, and this was an evolution from the movement that spurred the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act, and King, as well as a coalition of leaders from across the country, came together and said, it's time to focus on economic inequality. It's time, to, it's time for us to advocate for an economic bill of rights and ad address the issue of systemic poverty and systemic racism. And so this coalition of leaders came together, and they were set to launch this campaign on, at the end of April 1968. And three weeks before the launch of the campaign, uh, King was tragically assassinated. So he never lived to see the launch of the campaign, but it did move ahead in some sense. They set up what they called Resurrection City. It was a series of tents on the National Mall, uh, sort of uh, mimicked by uh, the Occupy movement mm -hmm. just a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Resurrection City lasted for a matter of weeks and then encountered all sorts of logistical issues, but the Poor People's Campaign never became what so many had hoped. And so this year, uh, clergy from all over the country and people from all over the country that are fed up with uh, the systemic injustices of economic inequality that disproportionately affects people of color, but affects, quite honestly, mostly white people. Uh, poverty, mo mostly white people are in poverty in this country. Um, they don't paint that, they, they, they put the minority face out there like it's a minor, like it's only minority that's on welfare, and and, and it's, you know they they put the face, but when you look at the generation, the the population, you know what I'm saying we're only a certain percentage of the population. There are a lot of poor white people that they don't, you know, they act like don't exist. Exactly. So disproportionately, it does affect black people, women, children, um, but there are approximately eight million more poor white people, you know, people living below the poverty line than any people of color. Mm. So pe people from all over the country are fed up and we're uh, re relaunching the campaign. Um, That's pretty awesome. You know, now it, it, we're, we're pretty adamant this is not a commemoration. This is not like commemorating something that happened. It's a continuation, uh, really carrying on the torch. And we're hoping that as many people that feel called and inspired um, will join this movement um, we're gearing up for approximately 40 days of, of actions. Uh, the, the original idea for the campaign was really based in civil disobedience, in large part because those were the successes that you know they had, uh, particularly down in uh, Montgomery and Selma, filling up the jails and people just not backing down and more and more and more people coming in. And so the idea for the Poor People's Campaign is similar mm -hmm. to uh, disobey, but disobey civilly, nonviolently, mm -hmm. and really, you know, try and make a statement and uh, get people to listen and wake up and, uh, you know, address some of these economic, these grave economic injustices. And who's the, who's, who's the person uh, on, in charge or uh, on 
top of the leaderboard. So nationally, there are two uh, two campaign co-chairs. Mm -hmm. One of them is the Reverend Dr. William Barber. I don't know if you all have been familiar yes. with the work that he's been doing. Very, very familiar with him. Great work. Yeah, so Great just work. for the listeners, um, he's uh, really came to national attention during the Moral Mondays movement down yeah. in North Carolina, really active on voting rights and other you know, justice issues. And then uh, Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris, who is coming out of Union Seminary, and she's been working for years on something called the Poverty Initiative. She's standing right to his uh, right in that, in that picture. Um, and, you know, Union Seminary is down in Manhattan, and for years they've been kind of setting up a network. You said she's standing where? To his right. Okay. The white woman with the glasses. Yeah. Okay. And so they've been working for years setting up networks of community-based organizations that are working on uh, race and economic justice issues. And so together they're the national leaders, but the idea is really a state-by-state -state strategy. Yeah. Because so much of these policies happen at the local and state levels. Mm -hmm. So in New York, we have other chairs. Oh, they're listed here. One is uh, Reverend Emily McNeil, and the other is Reverend Claudia de la Cruz. And uh, so Emily McNeil is the one that's going to be leading this meeting on the 18th at the Church in the Highlands. And she'll be here to speak more about what's happening in New York State. Um, a lot of it potentially could be centered in Albany, but if there's a big showing in Westchester and people are really committed to, to taking this on, then it's possible we could do an action right here locally. Um. Yeah, we need to. Yeah. No, um, I mean, we... we we, we definitely we, we definitely need to Westchester you know I mean you know our leaders talk a good game you know but we still have a lot of homelessness we still have pockets of poverty here in Westchester uh, we still have racial inequality here in Westchester hunger yeah yeah we still have all those things here in Westchester and, and, and I think it need to you know uh, um, I will fully support anything like that because we really need to address those issues yeah, I think it's roughly 20% um, of folks in Yonkers in particular, maybe a little bit lower Westchester overall, but are living below the poverty line. And then that doesn't even really take into account, you know, low-income people that are really just barely, you know, living right. check to check. Right. Uh, the number nationally is actually 43.5% of the country that are either, you know, below poverty or just, really? just above. I didn't know it was that high. And that's actually... Uh, significantly worse than it was when King launched the initial Poor People's Campaign. Mm. So, um... Wait, you said it's worse now. It's worse now than it was 50 years ago. Yeah. Mm. Just in terms of the sheer statistics. Yeah. Well, now, go, ahead, go, ahead. go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I wanted no, to... No, because I, I wanted to say, um... No, I know you said we're going on the 50th anniversary. What, um... And I'm sure that's some of the inspiration what is the goal? What is the outcome? I mean, you know, and the reason I ask this, and it's not against you, uh, and Damon mentioned it before, we have all these organizations and we're rallying for all these things and we're, people are marching and people are protesting, but there's no change in legislation. There's no follow through. There's no, you, you know what I'm saying? So what is the, what do you want to see come out of this? What is? Uh, uh, yeah, that's an excellent question. I think what's so exciting for me about this campaign and about us having the opportunity to really build on King's legacy is that this this truly is a movement like uh, like the, the goal in terms of the organizing that SCLC was doing in the South and the civil rights movement mm -hmm. was much broader than just a one particular campaign outcome mm -hmm. or overturning one particular seat mm -hmm. uh, of an elected office the movement was much broader. It did have those effects, ultimately. There were legislative wins. But the goal initially was to change minds and hearts and to overturn systemic injustice, right? And so I think building on King's legacy, that also is our goal. The goal is to uh, you know, bring together as many people as possible that are you know, fundamentally fed up with these issues, people that are personally impacted by economic policies that are unjust, 
to bring people together, to come together and say, we're not going to take this anymore, and to see where it goes. It's not going to be an action or two actions. Even after this 40 days of action, that's really just a launching point. Right. The idea is that this is going to go on for a long time, for a long time, and that the the way that the strategy is going to be carried out is going to be so decentralized that there could be, you know, certain gains here, certain gains there, you know, over the course of a long period of time. So you know, I'm, I'm kind of answering and not answering your mm -hmm. question to the extent that there isn't uh, one specific kind of campaign outcome or goal. And quite frankly, uh, I was actually trained as a community organizer. So that so kind of I. like frightens me a little bit because you're always kind of taught like, no, you need something winnable and concrete and this kind of thing. But like I said, I'm excited about this because I think King's legacy speaks for itself. And quite frankly, the outcomes that were achieved under his leadership, I mean, not just him, the leadership of so many, mm -hmm. um, are monumental and change the course of history. So I think if we can build on that and build on that legacy, I have like very uh, high hopes for what, what can get done. Um, we have um, Sandy Barnaby said, um, I guess answering my question a little bit, we are waking up as a nation. There is no politician taking up the work of ending poverty. Mm -hmm. And in capital letters, she put none. Um, and this brings it out to the forefront again. That, that was. Amen. Yeah, right. So, I appreciate what you're doing. I know, Damon, did you have a question? Um, no, up? no, I think she, she covered it. I, I think it's great that um, we're having this type of event and we're forcing, um, we're forcing the conversation. Um, has any elected officials um, said they, they will attend? We haven't invited any. Again, this okay. is, uh, so we're calling this kind of an informational meeting. Okay. This is a chance for folks to come and hear more or less what I just said, but uh, hopefully right. a lot more uh, right. kind of specifics. Right. Um, and we have childcare provided, so that shouldn't yeah, uh, I saw that. stop nice. anyone yeah. from, from coming. Um, it won't be a long meeting, just probably about an hour. We're gonna be singing, uh, we're gonna be praying. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good event. So good, good. again, the 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 point the goal, the goal at this point is not to you know put elected officials feet to the fire or anything right. like that. We're just uh, we're, we're laying a foundation to inspire a movement. That's good. And I, I want to ask you, and I don't want to put you on the spot or um, cause division of any kind, but have you um, have the black clergy been receptive to what you're doing? So. I've been one of the people organizing this event. Um, I have to be honest, I'm pretty new to Westchester. Okay. I, I grew up in, in Manhattan. Okay. Then I actually lived in Wisconsin for two years. Okay. But I just moved to Westchester like six months ago. Okay. And as I said, I've been serving this congregation in Scarsdale, but I don't really know too many black clergy locally. Um, We've been working a little bit, for example, with like the ecumenical food pantry of White Plains. Okay. I know there's some clergy involved with them, so they've probably heard about it. Mm -hmm. But one of the reasons why I'm glad to be here today and, and grateful is that I'm hoping that, you know, perhaps with your networks or that kind of thing, you can help to get the word out. Well, that, and that, that leads me to the next thing. For anyone who is listening, who wants to support, who wants to hear more and find out more information, is there a website, social media they can follow, anything? Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a Poor People's Campaign website. Mm -hmm. I believe it's just poorpeoplescampaign.org, one word. Okay. Um, but if anyone wants to contact me directly, I'd be more than happy um, to, you know, connect folks. Um, should I just, like, state my email address? Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. Or Whatever if there's a way for you to get, like, this flyer up on your... I did think you we have it, right? Do you have, did you send me that flyer? I've seen it. I've seen it in an email before. I don't know if I had it posted anywhere. So my email address is right at the bottom there. It says uh, joya at sccucc.org. Um, do me a favor. I've talked to you through email, right? Email me that again, and I will definitely post that up on blackwestchester.com tonight. And, then, you know, for anybody who wants more information, it will awesome. be on Black Westchester. And, and if there's any, and please feel free to utilize us to help get the, the message out and to let people know what's going on and inform the people. I think, I think this is something that, I mean, even, even if you just go in just to, to hear, to see what it's about, to, to find out, I think, I think people need to, to turn up 
and turn out and, and you know and, and see what's going on absolutely and particularly if any folks were involved the first time around mm -hmm. um you know I'd, I'd i'd really be inspired to hear you know what what their involvement was like and you know what brought them uh to the table that you know 50 years ago mm -hmm. and uh you know w w how how can their voices be included prominently this time around? Um, so, with that, uh, I brought some flyers. Can I just give them to you, just oh, in yes. case? Oh yeah, 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 definitely. If you wanna, yeah, maybe. wherever you have access in if you're in your building or community right. centers right, or that right. kind of stuff. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you again so much, and I look forward to being in touch. Thank right. you. Is thank there you. anything I didn't ask you that you want to get out? Anything? Anything else that you need the people to know, you know, last words or anything? I don't think so. I mean, just thank thank you again so much for having me here, um, and I, I look forward to working with you in the future. Um, question, is the church in the Highlands, 250 Bryant Avenue in White Plains? 35. 35 what? 35, 35 Bryant Bryan Avenue. Bryan Avenue. It's, it's 35 Bryant Avenue. And um, uh, White Plains Councilwoman Nadine Hunt Robinson said something about you should try to get co-sponsors, NAACP, black fraternities and sororities, churches, let's build. That's what she said. That's the kind of stuff they're going to be talking about yeah. on, on, on the 18th. Yeah, Emily will be there, as I said. She's the co-chair of the New York campaign. Right. And so she'll know much more about, you know, how to formally or informally, you know, collaborate with other organizations, that kind of stuff. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you came. I mean, and you know, we deal with so many things and a lot of times we are the ones holding politicians' feet to the fire and we're dealing with the politics and stuff. But these are the, you know, the, the, these are some of the reasons we, we set the show up and we have Black Westchester to get the word out about organizations and movements like what you're doing because we, the word's not getting to the people that it needs to get to. You know, it's not trickling down. The mainstream media, as Damon said, is not covering these things. You know what I'm saying? So that's why we started, you know, this 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 outlet. So it was definitely a pleasure to have this conversation and start this conversation. Yeah, and you independent are media is so important, and I'm so thankful for what you do. And um, feel free to come back anytime that you, you know, want to come back with an update or, you know, uh, you know, whatever information you need to get out. Um, please feel free. That, that you know it was an open door for you and for the organization yeah. i appreciate it thank you so much oh, absolutely all right and, um, thank you I don't thank know you, you i don't know if you've seen the latest issue there's some outside and there's some in the okay thank you for coming again good to meet you and we'll be in touch thank, thank you thank you Sandy said, where, where, where's the comment at? Sandy said, um, tonight's program is off the charts fabulous. <laughs> so we appreciate that. We appreciate that. Appreciate everybody who's tuned in, everybody who's listening. Um, Jeff Red just tuned in. Andrea Davis Moffitt, um, originally from Alberta, she lives in Atlanta. She's tuned in. Um, Tasha Diaz. Um, she's had a lot of comments to say. Um, she bigged you up a few times. Thank you. Stuff that you said. Um, and she's commented, you know, she's been commenting for the last half an hour on things that you were saying. Um, but I didn't get a chance to read them. Um, is anybody else that left? Uh, Wani Juan? I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, Glenn P. Butler uh, is tuned in. Uh, Kira. Caldwell is tuned in. Um, is anybody else on Sean Patterson Howard? Uh, Joanne um, Campadani. She has a show on here, um, I think on Tuesday nights. Um, she used to have the show after us. She's tuned in. Um, I think that's it of the ones I met, the ones that I hadn't read yet. Um, you got Gail Baxter? Oh, yeah, Gail Baxter just tuned in. I did just see her name, yes. As you were saying that, I just saw her name. Um, got, got to mention Gail. 
Uh, Brooke, <laughs> Brooke Jones in the house. Yeah. Um, Max Maxwell. Yes, yes. I did say Max. Um, uh, yeah, that's all the new ones that I see so far. So, um, we talked about a lot of things. Um, and I know Damon, and I don't want to wait till the last five minutes. So I'd no, rather, you can do it. You can I'd do rather, it now. I'd rather go into um, Damon's moment right now. Yeah, close up, because I want people to understand what I'm about to say. I don't have the close up. Thing. You can't do that? No. Not yeah. without Cruz in here. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right, um, you know I've been I've been kind of quiet about this because I've just been uh, sitting back, watching some things said on Facebook, and um, and watching our black elected officials on a national level punk out. Um, just keeping it plain. Every 10, 10 years, you know, there's a Farrakhan issue. Right? And every 10 years, a group of people get together and they bring Farrakhan in the mix and to get black people to denounce our brother Minister Louis Farrakhan. And it seems it's the season again for black leaders to denounce Minister Farrakhan. And I hope after I say this that other radio, black radio stations um, will speak up for the minister and the work that he has done in the black community for over 60 years. See, you know, I have a problem when white people always want to pick the leadership of black people. I have a problem with that. When they don't even come in our community, they don't invest in our community, they don't help our community, they don't do anything in our community but want to pick who black people will say who, who is their leader. They want to label the minister anti-Semitic because he's questioned certain Jews and what they have done. Because, he had, because the Nation of Islam research team wrote a book, The Secret Relationships of Blacks and Jews, where they research Jewish scholars on their history in the slave trade of Africans, right? And they put it in a book. Because he said Hitler was a wicked, great man. They say, oh, he says Hitler, Hitler, Hitler's great. So they want, and that was over 20 some odd years ago. So they want us to denounce the minister. But these same and and if you and if you do the Google, it this came from the Republicans. They got some goddamn nerve on who to denounce, and they have yet to denounce this fool in, in the White House. Who has said racist remarks against people of color, Latinos, who grab women by the pee? Handicapped. Now, don't, don't interrupt me. Do not interrupt me. Don't, because I'm going to lose my thought on this, because this is serious. See, because, oh, because those people that don't like what I'm saying, black, white, or other, you could defend me from Facebook. You don't have to advertise in Black <laughs> Westchester, but we're not that type of place here. He has helped, listen, the Nation of Islam has helped black people since Elijah Muhammad. Since Elijah Muhammad. Has helped the black community since Elijah Muhammad. Putting in businesses, helping, helping people, helping women. They say, oh, he is anti-women. Trust me, you never met a more stronger black woman than the women in the nation of Islam. 
he's homophobic. And I put it on my Facebook. If I, if, if, if I disagree with the homosexual lifestyle, does that make me homophobic? Absolutely not. That's just not me. That's just not me. And I think that's a lot of people. But if you're homophobic, do you. I mean, if you're, you're homosexual, do you. I'm not going to put you down. And the minister said, one sin don't outweigh another sin. So if you, if, if, if you believe that homosexuality is a sin, you can't hold it on that person because you're doing a, another sin, right? And there's no weight to that. A sin is a sin. But that's your business. It's not my business. Just don't, just don't put it on me. But when you, when, you, when you hear these things, and then when you see black elected officials that have worked with Minister Farrakhan over the years, because they get a little pressure, they get a little pressure, they want to denounce him? They did that to President Obama, Hillary Clinton. She made o Obama denounce Farrakhan. You know, and we haven't, and a lot of us haven't forgot that. But now they're trying to make, now they're trying to rear the ugly head again. Why? Because maybe he tells the truth. Well, uh, he's anti, he doesn't like Jews. Well, he, he's been critical of Jewish people or the Jewish religion. He's been crit critical of Christianity. He's been critical of the Muslim world. He's been critical of Catholics, those that are in power, and how the world is today. Because let's be honest, if all these religions, right, were actually acting like the people that they claim, right, that they follow, the world wouldn't be in the situation that it is today. Right? So I mean we could we we could we could get that. But my thing is today is yo, I, I am so disgusted in in and in, in hearing and seeing our black politicians get punked out when it comes to the minister. You know, and, and knowing the work that he's done in the community and he's been faithful to black people. And then they turn their back on. You know, big shout out to Tamika Mallory because she's all in the paper and they're attacking Tamika Mallory because she went to save his day. And they're trying to make Farrakhan a problem. Maybe he's your problem, but he's not the black community's problem. The black community love Mr. Farrakhan. Because they know if they want to hear the truth, they're going to listen to the minister, whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. And like I said, if people don't like what I'm saying, they can unfriend me. They don't have to talk to me. They can leave me alone. But we're going to talk truth today about this and, and let it go. Let it go. If he says someone is wicked, wickedly great, that's not giving props to anybody. And, you know, and, 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 and he got into all this, you know, with the Jews because of Jesse Jackson. When Jesse Jackson ran for president, he made a remark. He called New York Jaime Town. He called it Jaime Town. And... He made that great mistake when he thought the mic was off and the mic was on. See, but these same people don't denounce those Jewish people at the time that was screaming for Jesse's death when he was running for president. Nobody's denouncing them. We get amnesia on that part. But when they 
was screaming for Mr. Farrakhan's death outside of arenas where he was speaking. Nobody's denouncing that. Nobody's saying, you know, you shouldn't do that. So that's the hypocrite part. That, that's, we're being hypocritical. You can't, have a, you, you can't have it both ways. And when the minister stood up and defend Jesse, right, Jesse left Mr. Farrakhan standing there in the fight because he was defending him because they were screaming for Jesse's death. And that's how this, this beef started. People, do your research. Do your research. But, you know, I mean, this, 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 this has to stop. This has to stop because black elected officials get elected in black districts. And that was one thing I was, I was very surprised about Mount Vernon. When the minister came and he spoke at the Slater Center, no, the Dole Center, you had every level of black elected official came out to show the minister love. And not one word of anti semit nothing, you didn't hear anything, right? And that was a couple of years ago, because that, that was after the death of Ken, Kenneth Chamberlain, because me and Kenny was out in the crowd together. News 12 did a little report on it, and that was it. But now all of a sudden, it's this emergence to go to make black people, black elected officials, to denounce Minister Farrakhan. Why? Because he called Trump out, and then he said Trump will t tweet about everybody, but he won't tweet about him. So now, Trump being a coward and want to get these little groups to go after him, and then the Republicans are demanding, the Republicans are demanding Democrats to denounce somebody? They have the goddamn nerve. They have the nerve. And then the Democrats did it. Black ones. And it was posted, and I'm still trying to find it, it was posted that Gregory Meeks, Congressman Gregory Meeks out of New York, who's over Brooklyn, I think Queens, over all these black communities, all these Muslim communities, denounced the minister. He has some goddamn nerve knowing the work that the Nation of Islam has done in Brooklyn and Queens and Manhattan and the Bronx in the history of the Nation of Islam in New York City. See, and this is the time we need to run somebody against them because they punk out. They punk out. And we can't be punks no more in this game because our communities are not getting better because we have punk-ass politicians that want to cow down to a little bit of pressure. It doesn't make any sense. But we got more on that. And like I said, Stop bringing Farrakhan into this because he has a long history of helping black people in the black community. You do not choose our leadership. We choose our leadership. If you don't like it, then leave us the hell alone. But we're gonna, we, we will walk with you together on truth or we will walk through you. And that's, and, that's, and that's square biz. Because, see, these young kids ain't, and these young kids ain't taking that no more. Because you, you, you just can't put lies in the paper anymore. You can't do that no more. So, so big up to M Tamika Mallory. They're trying to make you denounce them and you not denouncing them. And stand tall. Because if y'all come to me talk about denouncing, I don't tell y'all get the fuck out of my face.
So, I'm done. So Republican Gregory Meeks, Democrat in New York, also disavowed the religious leader writing on Twitter, Farrakhan's anti-Semitic message, messages are upsetting and unacceptable. I always condemn hate speech of any kind. Yeah, but stop right that's, there. That's, that's Nobody has yet said what he said. No. If, you read, if you read all the articles, they have yet to say what he actually said. But they want to go back to the, to the Hitler statement, but he straightened that out on Donahue back in the 90s. He was on Donahue's show two days straight. That's the first time I've seen him. And y'all could pull it up on YouTube. And he, and he explained what they tried to do to him w with that statement. But then they, then they tried it again with, this, with the book, The Secret Relationships of Blacks and Jews. But then he blew that out of the water because he said, look, the book is quoting Jewish scholars. We research Jewish scholars. So if, if the book is anti-Semitic, then the Jewish scholars that we researched that said what they said is what? Anti-Semitic. So how could that be? So they moved on from that. So now they, they write articles that they really have no basis because the man is 80, 45 years old and he can have a lecture where 10, 20,000 people can come out and more thousands of people will watch live on Facebook and more thousands of people will watch on, on the website. He's the last real black man standing. Last real black man standing. And now they won't go after him. And then punk ass Gregory Meeks want to denounce him. We're going to run somebody against you, Gregory Meeks, because the black community is not going to forget it. With that said, um, we're coming to the close of the show. You're listening to Black Westerns Presents, the People Before Politics radio show, every Sunday, 6 to 8, on InTheMixRadio.com, every Sunday. Until next week, peace. 22 million black victims of Americanism are waking up and they're gaining a new political consciousness, becoming politically mature. And as they become, uh, develop this political maturity, they're able to see the recent trends in these uh, political elections. That any minority that has a block of votes that stick together is in a strategic position. Either way you go, that's who gets it. You're, you're in a position to determine who go to the White House and who stay in the doghouse. You're the one who has that power. You, you and I have never seen democracy. All we've seen is hypocrisy. <laughs> through the eyes of someone who has, who has enjoyed the fruits of Americanism. We see America through the eyes of someone who has been the victim of Americanism. We don't see any American dream. We've experienced only the American nightmare. We haven't benefited from America's democracy. We've only suffered from America's hypocrisy. And the generation that's coming up now can see it. And I'm not afraid to say 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 it. And I'm and I'm not afraid to say it. And I'm not afraid to say it. And I'm not afraid to say it.